Okay. <laughs> this is reverse engineering your mouth. My name is Evie. I use she, her pronouns. And I'm going to be talking about this really silly app. And if you want to play around with it, I'm going to be posting a link to it on my Twitter. So you can see that there. Um, but let's get into it. I want to introduce you the star of the show, Pink Trombone, this really weird app that I found on Twitter like two years ago. And it's... Uh, it simulates speech, so it's like the human face kind of from the side, and then it makes these weird sounds. Does it? Let's see. Why is it? There we go. So you can move the tongue. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can, like, the nose and the lips. And the throat. It's really weird. Um, but this is supposed to make like most of the sounds of English. And I speak English. I spoke in English like most days of my life. And I cannot figure out how to get this thing to make English sounds. I like know, I like move my mouth and like English sounds come out. But how do I make this thing make English sounds? Kind of reminded me of uh, this game that I played in middle school of like this activity that I did every day. But when I like tried to manually move the muscles using the app, it was really hard. Does anyone remember this game, Co-op? <laughs> so like, you're trying to get this guy to run using the Q, W, O, and P keys to like move the muscles in your legs. And like, I move my legs every day, but I don't know which muscles move at which time. And that's very clear when you're trying to move this person's muscles. And it's the same thing with pink trombone. So like, I could probably do some research and write a program that like hits the keys at the right time to make this guy run. My goal was, figure out where to click on Ping Trombone to make English sounds, and then maybe put those English sounds together and make English words. That's the goal. How hard could it be? Very hard. Um, so the field of study that's useful for like d achieving this goal is called phonetics. Phonetics is just the study and classification of speech sounds. So I want to make speech sounds. Let's learn how they're made. People are interested in phonetics for all kinds of reasons. Uh, Oh, why is it cool? Because some people like to learn new languages, and they're like, I'm learning a new language. How do I make my mouth make these new sounds? Because lots of languages have different sounds. Or like the creator of Pink Trombone had a newborn baby and was like, oh, my baby's learning how to speak. I want to like learn how this works. I like phonetics because I'm a big choir nerd, and when you sing, you want to like enunciate really clearly what like the sounds you're making are so that the audience can hear, and also make similar sounds to the other singers so that it's like a unified sound. So I spent a lot of time in my life like talking with other singers about how exactly your mouth makes these particular sounds. So when I saw Pink Trombone, I was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, so a tool in phonetics that's really useful for my goal is the idea of phonemes which is just a unit of sound. I want to figure out how to make the English units of sound, which here are like some of them, like mm or ah uh, or v, and uh, figuring out how those are made. You've probably seen uh, phonemes before like in a dictionary definition. So if you've never spoken any English and you have no idea what the word curious is, but you know the international phonetic alphabet, then you would see these like symbols in the definition and you would be able to pronounce it. And the International Phonetic Alphabet has like all kinds of phonemes from all different kinds of languages. There's lots of sounds that don't exist in English that exist in other languages. But they're really useful for English because there are only 26 letters, but like 44 different unique sounds. And I want to get Pink Trombone to speak English. And if I just use like the letters, it would be very hard. Because as many of us know, reading English is very hard. But these sounds all make, these, these are the spellings of all the sounds of English. And these are all the tools that I have that I kind of like played with earlier in the tool. So, can we get Pink Trombone to speak? Let's see. Okay, so I was looking through the code, which I just like took from the source, and there is this function that was commented out. I was like, oh, what does that do? It draws onto the screen a bunch of phonemes and where to click. So like, wow, a bunch of work was already done for me. How convenient. So I just uncommented it. <laughs> <laughs> and I got this. <laughs> That's great. I love not doing work. So <laughs> unfortunately, these aren't phonemes, a lot of them. They're like other symbols. There's like a trademark symbol in there on an E. I don't really know what's going on. I was trying to debug 
my tools, what, what tool is wrong? It was my text editor that was wrong. So if this ever happens to you, save with like a different Unicode encoding, then it looked like this. So here we go. We can click on different parts of the screen, get a lot of different English sounds, and I made my first word, so I'm going to um, my version of the app. So my first word was, why isn't the sound on? Mama. There you go. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> Which is? Mama. <laughs> this is a lot of people's first word. Like, a lot of babies do this as their first word. And I think a lot of different languages have it as, like, the mother's name. I think this is, like, my first word with pink trombone when I was playing with it, like, two years ago, just playing an app. Very easy word. Other words, harder. Mama, easier. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about like some of the other sounds and what makes them harder. <laughs> um, but to, before I get into those consonants, I want to talk about, I'm going to be talking specifically about consonants that come in voiced and unvoiced pairs. So there are a bunch of consonants where your mouth and face are in the exact same position, and the only difference is whether you're using your vocal cords or not. And the easiest way to understand this is to try it yourself. So I know you're all just here to like watch a talk, but I'm gonna take like five seconds and like make these pairs of sounds and like feel how your face doesn't change but your vocal cords go. Make sounds. <laughs> this blew my mind the first time I did it. <laughs> yeah, so, and you can see it in the app too, like when you turn the voice on, see how like uh, uh, the symbols change. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about these two ones where the symbols change. So one of them is fricatives. So fricatives are where you like let some of the air through, but most of it gets constricted. So if you like uh, put your teeth on your lips, you can make the F sound. And like there's also like S and sh and the H sound. There's a fricative missing. Yeah, the H sounds pretty weird, but if you like, there's different amounts of it. There's a missing fricative, which is the TH sound, which also has a voiced and unvoiced one. And that's made with the tongue on the teeth. And I was like, how do I make this? But there's no teeth in pink trombone, so I can't make it. <laughs> or it would be very difficult. So there's just no teeth. Maybe I'll open an issue, like needs more teeth. Uh, <laughs> but also, the creator of pink trombone made this to simulate like a baby, and baby don't, babies don't have teeth. So maybe it's that. Um, and we also have stops. Uh, so blah, that's, you totally stop blah, the sound. Blah, 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 blah. And then there's also the unvoiced versions. But the unvoiced versions are super quiet. And I was looking into why this is. And when you um, let the air go again after the stop, that's called like aspiration. Aspirations are way, use way more air in unvoiced stops than voice stops. So try this again. Do like puh and buh. And, and put your hand in front of your mouth. You can feel way more air with puh, puh, and buh. How do I make air flow through? more on unvoiced tops, I don't know. So we have some problems. We can't make the TH sound. Unvoiced tops are barely audible. There's a bunch of other consonants and vowels that also sounded like not quite right that I don't have time to talk about today. But even more than that, I tried to put them together and it was hard, as you may imagine, for a bunch of different reasons. So one is like the transition between voiced and unvoiced phonemes is hard. Like when do you turn on the voice? How quickly do you turn on the voice? Specifically for H, I think the transition to turn the voice is like a gradual, whereas I turned it on immediately. So this was my second word, haha, -ha, which sounds much worse than mama. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, uh, uh. Not quite right. Uh, also, different phonemes are different lengths. So like vowels are often longer than consonants. And I just made them all 200 milliseconds. So it sounds kind of weird that they're all the same. But I added a, an extra setting that make consonants shorter. And this, I think, helps a lot. And then there's a bunch of other things. Like when you speak, the pitch of your voice changes. And there's emphasis on different syllables. Like getting pink trombone to sound like a human is like would be a lot of work. But I think there are a lot of things that you could do to make it um, a lot closer. The word mama was easy because, first of all, the consonant M, you just like close your mouth. Much easier than doing anything with your tongue. The vowel ah, you open your mouth. And that's like pretty much the resting position. There's no unvoiced, it's just a full voiced sound. So that word was really easy. Other words, harder. But like, I'll give it a shot making other words. Yeah. Let's try hi bang bang con. 
which involves a lot of like weird consonants that you know are difficult to produce. But yeah, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, you put it into the International Phonetic Alphabet. Oh my god. Let's do the whole thing. Yeah. And then if you make the consonants sh shorter, I think it sounds slightly better. Not bad. Kind of reminds me of like in Quop, where it's the guy's running, but also it doesn't look at all like what a human would look like if they were running. This is like, it speaks, but it doesn't sound like a human would if they were speaking. But like, hey, we learned a little bit about how like speech works, and that was fun. And I'm gonna post these links on Twitter. So there's the original app, and there's like the one that I was playing with today, and you can like see the code and add stuff to it. And there's this really great website I found that like teaches you how to make English sounds and like. I've, again, spoken English for my whole life, and this was very useful to me to learn how it actually works. So thanks for listening. Have a great Fame and Con.